I, I actually might have a, a stat here. We've got a pop quiz to lead off our running back list that might change your mind about the best player of the decade. Okay. So your pop quiz, who scored the most touchdowns this decade? So this is scored the most touchdowns, not passing oh touchdowns. Oh, my gosh. Scored actually went into the end zone with the ball. Marshawn Lynch. Not Marshawn Lynch. Oh, no. hold on a second. You got me uh, here right now. Ooh, most touchdowns this decade. He has an argument for the best player of the decade. And he's a running back. He's a running back. Uh, LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy Bam. is the correct answer. Oh, because he had a run catch. He did. Yep. He yeah. had 85 touchdowns wow. this decade. That's five more than Antonio Brown. Right. Gronk had a ton as well. Gronk had 80, yep. Des Bryant is up there. Marshawn Lynch has 75, yeah, Marshawn so he's not Lynch far is, behind. Yep, he's tied for third there. Yeah, Des Bryant's a guy that people forget. I wrote him down when I heard this. I said, let me just start thinking. And I, my mind actually started working a little. But I thought, you know, Des Bryant, I don't know what his numbers were. I didn't look him up. But, you know, he was a big yeah, part for yeah. many, many years. He, he was, was a central figure in that pass game for sure down in Dallas. No doubt. So here's my, uh, here's my all running back list, my okay. top okay. five. And we'll see if you guys agree or disagree here. So uh, I had a couple honorable mentions, and I wanted to throw in there. I wanted to throw Jamal Charles in there. Deserves it. Because Good. he led the decade with 5.29 yards per rush. Yep, no everybody ignored him in the NFL just like they ignored him in Texas, so go ahead. Right. Yep, <laughs> so no one else had that many who had at least 400 rushes in the decade. I also want to throw an honorable mention with Darren Sproles, most receiving yards for running back this yeah. decade. Yeah. Yes, good one. I thought of him too. Yep. Very dangerous. So so my number one was LaShawn McCoy. Okay. Because he led in rushing or more rushing yards than any other running back. More touchdowns than anyone. Wow. So that really is argument for player of the decade. That, right that, so he had more rushing yards total than – I didn't look any of Correct. these up. So he had more over than 10, AP. Over 10,000. The only one over 10,000. And this is just from the years 2010 yes, right. through 2019. So right. LaShawn McCoy, number one in yards. Wow. That's surprising. Do you want to change your pick from Aaron Rodgers now? Uh, no, I don't. But I really – it did make me think a level higher of LaShawn McCoy. There's no doubt. So then I went LaShawn McCoy, right. Adrian Peterson second. Okay. With uh, He had 70 rushing touchdowns. He had the most rushing touchdowns of any running back uh, in the decade. Matt Forte third because he had the fifth most rushing yards. Right. Third most receiving yards for running back. Boy, you forget about – I did not write Matt Forte, you Forte do, down. You do, right? Yeah. Boy, was he good. For, man, yeah. catching, running, just really underrated. And he was on the couch with uh, with the male version of Oprah not that long ago. He was. He was on there with <laughs> <Okay>. me. <laughs> you didn't. You did not make him cry though, did you? <laughs> no, I did not. Getting close. Oh. Uh, I had. I had Big Phil. I had Marshawn fourth. Uh, he had the fourth most rushing yards this decade. Second most rushing touchdowns. I did throw Frank Gore fifth there because he had the second most rushing yards of any running back of this decade. So that's my top five: McCoy, Peterson, Forte, Lynch, and Gore. Ooh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. You know, so much of it is timing. You know, what yes. years you played, all that. Um, it, it, it's how I, I many. I don't know where Le'Veon Bell ranks up in that because it's. I, I didn't look at numbers. How long was he at Pittsburgh? Of course. How many years were really over the top? I mean, there for a while, Le'Veon Bell was one of the best yeah. weapons in the NFL. Yes, sure. I agree. Like, I think my origi my my list would have Le'Veon Bell on there for this yeah. decade. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I would have put him on there. I would. I can't lie. Like, I think I would have put him on there in front of Matt Forte. And I'm, I'm going to say I, I underestimated Forte, too, on this list. He was on my list, but I wrote about. But I, I just feel like Le'Veon Bell, between receiving, running, the 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 Steelers being so relevant yeah. and a lot of it was because of him. I probably would have put him in my top five. Twelfth most rushing yards this decade, Le'Veon Bell. Man, twelfth. Yeah. Gosh, that's yeah. not, not as well, good as he, I thought. He, you know how many years has he? I can't. I can't even tell. When I don't he know. started? Yeah. When was his first year in the league? Because you do get an advantage if you've. Yes. 2013 was his first year in the league, so he, he missed those first couple of seasons. Yeah, and of course, the yeah, that, two years of course, he missed him. those in these last two That's years, true. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. right, right. So who, who, I'm curious, would you guys both have LaShawn number one just because of the numbers there? Is it hard to put him anywhere else? No, I would have Adrian Peterson just okay. for what he is and everything. I think that would be my – I thought of this Lynch uh, – this Lynch, this list – I really, the first two guys that came to my mind were Adrian Peterson, because I didn't know the years, and right. then Marshawn Lynch, just because yeah. of what they represented sure. and what they did for their team. And it can't be, you know, it's not all about yards and this, this, it just the mentality, 
the structure of the whole franchise was kind of built around them yes, a little it bit. Yes, it was, yeah. So, you know, I always take those things into account. But, hey, this is an argument that no matter what we do, none of us can lose it. None of us can win it because it's all good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm with you. I mean, Arian Foster, Arian Foster is another guy that we probably yeah. well, throw on there. Yeah, but, he was great. But I'm I mean, with he, Dad. I think my my I'm with Dad. I, the first two names, if I just said it and said I didn't like look up stats and go, oh wait, was he playing in 2010 or whatever? Yeah. And when AP and Marshawn Lynch were the first two guys I thought of, and I think it's a little bit because of like. Hey, the Minnesota Vikings were who they were because of Adrian Peterson, and they played through him. And then the Seattle dynasty or era started because of Marshawn Lynch, and that allowed them to like ease Russell Wilson in. And of course, they made their defense dominant. So that would probably be the reason I would make those two. And then Lashawn McCoy would be my third, even though I really you got me rethinking Lashawn McCoy a little bit with those He's stats. So under the, well, how can yeah. that guy be under the radar? I know. Like, you know most rushing yards, most touchdowns, but Lashawn McCoy has been pretty good for a couple of different. Yeah, teams. he's been good. For a long time, and yeah. you know, you even see him with the Chiefs when he makes a few runs, he stuff does. like that. You go, Wow, that's a long time in the NFL. He's withstood the test of time and all that, but you know, he's kind of got the body. He's not big, he's not small, he's just got one of those bodies like wide receivers. I love wide receivers who are uh, what's the word for it, long and stringy. Right. I, you know, they they don't lose speed like you know, bigger guys do as fast. It's just there's something about that, you know, there I, is. Yeah, and and it's you know it's AJ Green, of course. Yeah. You know Calvin Johnson. Don't go there. Yet. Down. Hold on, we're going to talk oh, about. Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't go there. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Let's but, go through my top five. But wait, wait, well, just we have to note this with oh, the running backs. Yeah. There we are again, talking about top running backs of the decade, and none of us are saying Frank Gore. Yeah. You know, it's it's weird with Frank five. Gore. I put him at five. It's just weird. I'm just saying he's going to go to the Hall of Fame, but it's like. The most underwhelming Hall of Fame running back we've ever seen. That's what I just kind of think. Well, he's got to get it done. To, you know, we know longevity. Yeah. And, you know, his value is not necessarily a lot of the same thing. It wasn't all about the stats. It's what he did. You know, I love running backs. Who are you? You and I were talking the other day. I said, you know, this running back where you don't get it and what the difference is. Well, I was talking about Derrick Henry. And, you know, when he's healthy, of course, he's a little banged up now. But he's one of these guys that runs, and when you tackle him, he always gets two more yards. Yeah, right. And, you know, in the NFL, everybody, you know, sometimes makes fun of me. Oh, those extra – man, those extra yards are everything. Yeah. They're everything. They're situational. It changes play calls, the options you have, the way the defense plays. You know, but you can't explain it to people because, you know, I heard something today. Somebody's on TV, and they were quantifying everything with running. Well, you know, did you know this, guys? I want to tell you something. You probably didn't know this. When Ezekiel Elliott carries the ball, or they throw it less than 30 times a game, they win 92% of the time. Oh, no kidding. I wonder how. So let's just hand it to Zeke until he gets to 30, and then we win. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. that, all <laughs> that just, you know, oh, and then when, when Dak throws it over 40, they're three and six or something stupid. Yeah, because they're losing he throws the it because they're behind. And they're behind, right, exactly. Holy Christ. Right, right. Now, we get so, now everything is about the numbers. We yes. can't talk about what's real. Let's, let's make up some, well, the analytics and, you know. you got to have the data to back it up. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Oh, I do, yeah, you know what I mean? I just heard somebody talking about the draft. And they got into all the analytics and everything, why Baker Mayfield should have been and was the number one draft pick of the of the draft two years ago. I just went, oh, my gosh, get a nice pick and stick it in my ear. <laughs> We're going to use analytics in college football to determine pro quarterbacks and people. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Good luck. I hear you. All right. All right. Let's go. Back, we'll to the the back to the analytics. I feel good, though. It made Mike. me feel better. Go yeah, ahead. You sound better. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.